Hello everyone, in today's video you will learn how to create a buoyancy script that works with the new Unity water system inside the HDRP, the high definition render pipeline. This script will be applicable to any game object inside your scene to make it float on the surface of the water. This system will allow you to control the depth submersion point at which point the game object will start floating on the surface of the water. Also, you can control the water drag, how fast the game object comes back to the surface of the water after it dips inside the water. Also, you can control the water angular drag, how fast the game object returns to the original position after rotating to certain point. So let's get started. Let's start by creating a new Unity project and make sure that you are using Unity 2023 since the water system has been introduced in that version. Choose from the templates the 3D HDRP template, then let's name it Buoyancy HDRP Tutorial. Choose the location and the organization, no need for Unity Cloud or version control, and create a new project. For detailed step by step how to add an HDRP water system to your video game, you can check my previous tutorial, the link down in the description. Or now we will do it the easy way by importing one of the samples that is provided by the HDRP package. So we can go to Window, Package Manager, then go to the Unity Registry tab. Next, we can choose the HDRP down in the list, the high definition render pipeline then go to the samples tab at the bottom you can see the water samples simply import that next search for the scenes folder inside the samples folder and open the island scene you will notice immediately on the bottom right there is instruction how to enable the water surface so click enable water it will take you to the hdrp settings where you can enable the water surface next you enable the decal layers after that, enable the SSR, which stands for Screen Space Reflections, and enable the transparency on that too. And finally, you can enable the volumetric clouds. If you look closely in the scene, we can notice that there are seagulls in the scene going up and down, but that's totally unrealistic. It simply takes the point of the water surface and assign it to the position of the game object without any buoyancy. So let's first delete all the seagulls from the scene. Make sure that you delete the seagulls game object because it contains a box collider. Now let's add a simple cube to test our new script for buoyancy on it. I already created the script and now I will explain the contents of that script to you. I named the script as floater. The floater script consists of the following. First, we need a reference for the rigid body on the box or any other game object, of course. Then we need a public float to represent the depths at which objects start to experience buoyancy. Next, we need a displacement amount float. We can set it as a public to determine the amount of buoyant force applied. Next, we need the number of the point of buoyant force because we will use, for example, four points in our box example. We need a float for the water drag. We need a float for the water angular drag. We need also a reference for the water surface itself. We need the water search parameters to search for the current point on the water surface and we need water search result to store that point in it. When it comes to physics, it's always recommended to use the fixed update instead of update. So first we applying a distributed gravitational force in the rigid body by adding force at position and dividing the physics gravity into the number of floaters, in our case four for the box. Then we set the position, transform the position, the current position, and we set the force mode to acceleration. Then we set up the search parameters for projecting on water surface by comparing the current position to the water surface position by calling the start position WS and assigning to it the current game object position. Then we project the point onto water surface to get the result by calling the water project point on water surface and passing to it the search. 
Next, we check if the game object is below the water surface by comparing the Y value of the position to the Y value of the water surface. And then we calculate the displacement multiplier based on the submersion depth and store that in a float called displacement multiplier. Then we apply a buoyant force upwards in the opposite side of the gravity by adding force at position and using the absolute value of the physics gravity on the y-axis to give exactly the opposite force of the gravity. Next, we apply a water drag force against the game object velocity by adding a force to the rigid body and simply multiplying that with the negative value of the rigid body velocity. And finally, we apply water angular drag torque against the angular velocity by simply adding a torque to the rigid body and using the negative value of the angular velocity of the game object itself. Save the script and go back to the scene. Now we will need four floater points at each corner of the cube. You can do the same for any game object and you can add as many floaters as required. In our case, we will create for now first floater and we add to it the script we just created. Of course, don't forget to add the rigid body to the box collider of the cube. Set the reference to the rigid body. For now, you can set all the parameters to one except the floaters to four because we have we will have four floaters. And of course, set a reference for the water surface itself by dragging the ocean game object into the water surface uh, reference. Next, we need to position the floaters at each corner of the box. So the first floater can be 0.5 on both X and Z axis. The second floater, we set it to minus 0.5 on X while keeping the 0.5 on Z. The third floater will be minus 0.5 on both Z, X and Y, Z axis. And finally, the floater 4 will be 0.5x minus 0.5z. So now we have perfectly set the positions of the four floaters. Let's hit play and voila! Here is the buoyancy effect working exactly and perfectly and realistically as expected. So now you can see the box floating on the surface of the water. If I move it up to let it fall it will go down then start buoyancy up and everything working perfectly even the angular drag and the water drag you can set the depth uh, buffer to determine where the game object start uh, submerging with the water and of course, you can play around with all other parameters like the displacement amount, the water drag and the water angular drag to get the desired buoyancy effect you want specifically for your game object or your video game. When you're adjusting the parameters, don't forget to select all the floaters to make the changes to all of them or you can make a prefab then apply the changes to it so it will apply to all floaters so for example if we want to change the water angular drag we can change it to 10 and that will make the game object return slowly after rotation to its original position check it now i'm rotating the game object it returns slowly to the original position when we set the water angular drag to 10. the same goes for the water drag if i set it to 10 the higher value, the slower the game object returns to its original position. So uh, check now. I will dip the box down in the water. Then it will go back slowly, 10 times slower than usual because I set the water drag to 10. Let's try again. I select the cube, move it down into the water and it will go back slowly to the surface so the higher the value the slower the game object return to its original position i applied the same concept to this boat model which provided by the same scene so we simply have a box collider and the rigid body of course and i added floaters at the edges of this boat so the same technique just 
put floaters in positions that suits your game object. And as an extra, to avoid rendering the water inside the boat, there is something called water excluder. As you can see, the only thing changed from the box is the water angular drag because we need a greater angular drag for the boat. You can check it now. If I rotate, it returns nicely like a real boat. So that's awesome. Let's try to move it up. Nice, move it down, floats back, and really realistic buoyancy effect. The same I did for all the game objects that you can see in the scene. I just downloaded a high quality box models. You can find links for all the assets used down in the description and enjoy playing with the physics. So maybe in the next video we create a uh, boat driving mechanics to this one or I use a modern uh, boat and try to create something realistic as a boat driving game mechanics. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from watching this, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the notification bell to keep notified about the new tutorials and experiments. Of course, we are deeply thankful to our supporters on Patreon who keep encouraging us to create such tutorials. And of course, if you become a Patreon, you can download all the projects that we have published on this channel Till next video, see you soon.